All right then, so before we start this lesson, I wanna make it clear that you'll need Node.js installed for what we're about to do. The reason for that is that we need NPM, which is the Node Package Manager, to be able to run scripts to compile assets on the front end that we'll be using. In our case, SAS files need to be compiled into CSS. So go ahead and install that by going to node.js.org and click one of these buttons, probably this one right here, to download and install Node.js on your computer. It's dead easy to do. Now, to make sure you have Node installed, once you've done that, just open up a terminal and type node-v and you should see a version number right there. If you don't, then it's not installed. Try doing this again. Now, so far in the project, we've used vanilla CSS and we've placed it directly in the public folder inside the CSS folder right here. Now, this directory, this public directory, is what browsers have access to on the front end. So they can load all of these resources and use them directly. However, what if we wanted to use something like SAS to style up our views? And SAS, by the way, is a style sheet language that allows us to do a number of things that regular CSS can't do, like use functions and nested rules. If you do wanna learn more about it, I have a whole playlist about SAS on this very channel, and the link is gonna be right down below. Now, browsers can't understand SAS in its raw form, so it makes no sense to put the SAS files in the public directory. First of all, our SAS needs to be compiled into regular CSS, which a browser can understand, and then that compiled CSS should be put into the public directory. So to do this, we're gonna need some kind of build tool. Now the good thing is, is that Laravel comes baked with a Webpack setup to do this under the hood for us, and it requires very little effort on our part. But in order for this to all work, we first have to install a few dependencies using NPM. Now these dependencies are actually already listed inside the package.json file right here. So when we run npm install, it's gonna install these packages. And this is why we needed Node.js installed on our computer. So we can use npm to install those packages. So I'm gonna open up a terminal and I'm gonna to come to a different one over here. And I'm gonna say npm install and press enter. And that's gonna install all of those packages for us. Now, one of those packages was called Mix, something that Laravel uses to help compile our assets like SAS. And we can actually see this package in action by looking at the Webpack Mix file. So that can be found right at the bottom over here. And these have all installed now, so we can close that down. And we can see the first thing we do at the top is create a constant, and that's called Mix, and we require Laravel Mix. And here what we do is specify some different start points for our different resources that need compiling. So for example, if we used something like Vue.js or some modern features of JavaScript that we wanted compiling into browser safe JavaScript, then our source point would be in the resources folder, in the JavaScript folder, then app.js. It would take that and it would compile it into browser ready JavaScript and put it in this directory, the public directory. Same for SAS. So here we're saying, okay, take this file inside resources, inside SAS, and then app.scss and put it in the public forward slash CSS folder. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna create a file inside resources and inside SAS, and then output it to the CSS folder in the public directory where our current CSS is. Now, we're not gonna use this file right here because we're gonna use that later on when we come to using authentication. So instead, we're gonna create a different file and we're gonna chain that on at the bottom. So let me delete the semicolon, come down here and say .sass. Again, we're gonna say the source file will be in resources forward slash sass forward slash and we're gonna call it main.scss. And then that is gonna go in to the public directory forward slash CSS. Now remember, we already have inside the public folder, the CSS folder, and inside that main.css. So when we run this, it's gonna take this SAS and it's gonna put it onto that file, main.css in here. So it's gonna overwrite this, okay? So what I'm actually gonna do is copy all of this stuff first of all, and I'm gonna paste it into a new file that we place inside the SAS folder. So let me go into resources first and into SAS, and I'm gonna create a new file called main 
main.scss. And then I'm going to go into main.css. I'm going to cut all of this and save it. And I'm going to paste it into main.scss just so we don't lose any of that regular CSS and any additional SAS that we write now is also going to be put eventually into this main.css file. Okay, so now that we have this, if I was to go over here and refresh, then you'll notice the styles drop off. And that's because at the minute we have this SAS file, but it's not been compiled yet into this main.css file. This is empty now. So the CSS that the browser is pulling in is just this empty file and that's why they've dropped off. So how do we compile our SAS now into this CSS file? Well, all we need to do is open up our terminal and say npm run dev and that is gonna run the compile for us. It's gonna take our SAS and dump it into main.css. And I had an error doing that so I've just realized it's because I've misspelled resources. So I'm gonna put my R into resources and I'm going to save it then I'm going to run this again so npm run dev and this time it should work okay cool so this has worked and if we now take a look inside our public file we have app.css because this ran as well where we take this scss file and put it in the public directory so this ran we don't really need this at the minute there's nothing in it but it still ran and also this one ran as well so if we take a look at main.css now we can see all of that code again and if we were to refresh again now this works so now that that setup is complete we can go ahead and start adding extra sas into our file to style up our pages a bit more now what I'm doing here is just copying from my GitHub repo into here because I don't want to type out a load of CSS because that's not what this course is all about. Oops, I put it into the CSS file right there. No wonder it didn't like it. I need to put it into main.scss. So paste it all in here. And again, I'm pasting this in because I don't want to write out a load of CSS. It's not a CSS course, but I am going to quickly talk about what I have done. And if you want to copy and paste, from the repo as well. I'll leave the exact link to the CSS file in the description down below so you can go and grab that. But what I've done is create a wrapper and this class we've used in several of our different views. If I open one of these up, I'll show you. So index, not index, over here, show.blade. You can see this wrapper we've used and all it's doing is kind of containing the content within a central column. Now on the create pizza form, I've added a background and some padding. I've styled the label and select boxes and the imports, just basically some margin and some padding, that kind of thing. And then the submit button at the bottom, I've given a color of purple. And again, just added some padding, uh, margin, border, etc. Now on the pizza details page where we show a single pizza, what I've done is just given this a background color and some padding. Again, the P, some margin and a font weight of bold. I've styled the button so it's that purple color again. And the back button at the bottom, I've just styled to give it some margin and also a color of purple. Finally, the pizza index page. So where we list all of the pizzas, I've said pizza index and then the H1 inside that. And by the way, this is SAS in action. So we're nesting a rule inside another rule. That's what we can do in SAS that we can't do in CSS. So when we run the compiler, it compiles all of this into something that is valid CSS that the browsers understand. So anyway, inside here, we've styled the H1, uh, the individual pizza items by giving them a background, some padding, some margin, the image, and the image, by the way, isn't there yet. I'm going to place that into the view in a second. And it's going to be an image of a little pizza next to each pizza. And then finally, the H4 inside each pizza and the anchor tag as well. So we're going to now go to the views to make sure that they are all up to date as well. So let me cross this off. And by the way, we need to now compile this again if we want it to pick up over here in the browser. Now, instead of always running npm, run dev every time you make a change it would be nice if we could just run one command and then whatever we save it compiles it for us automatically unfortunately we can do that all we need to do is say npm run watch and now it's going to watch the file and every time we make a change and then save the file for example if i do a space and then save it it's going to compile it again you saw down here and it automatically updates in the main.css so all of the styles now are going to be 
over here. All right, cool. So now we can take those two off. And if I refresh over here, it's not going to look great yet because we've not changed the views because I've used some classes in the CSS now that don't actually feature in the views and we need to address that in a second. If I go to the form, so forward slash create, it might look a bit better. Yeah, it does. But anyway, now I'd like to go and just amend the views a little bit. All right, so the first one I want to do is, in fact, this page right here, because currently it's not changed at all. So let's go over here and let's go to the index view. Now, I want to get rid of all of this stuff up here. We don't need that anymore. And also this stuff here. I'm going to keep this for each right here for now. We'll change that in a second, though. And then first, I'm going to add a div at the top with a class of wrapper and also of pizza hyphen index. And then inside that div, we want to paste this ultimately. So let me cut all that and paste it inside here and scoot that in if I can. And then above that, I need to add in an H1. So H1 and the title is going to be pizza orders. And beneath that, we've got this for each loop. Now, I don't want to output all of the details. I just want to output the name of the pizza. Then when we click on this, it's going to take us to the details page of that pizza. So let me now surround this with an anchor tag as well. And it's going to go to forward slash pizzas forward slash the ID of the pizza that this is. And we can access that from the pizza object. So we'll say pizza and then the ID. So that's going to be one, two, three or four, etc. So let me cut this and paste it inside the anchor tag as well. And also I'm going to surround this with an H4 just so it's a bit bigger like so. And then now above the div or rather above the H4, I'm going to also add in an image. Now this image is going to come from over here. Woohoo. Oops. We need to open up this again. So I'm going to drag this into the public folder and I will leave a link to this image down below in the description so you can use it as well. It's just called pizza and it's this icon of a pizza right here. So I'm going to link to that from here. It's in the public folder, then in the image folder, then forward slash pizza dot PNG. Alt will just say pizza icon. OK, so let's save that and we'll see over here how that looks. Uh, this one. So let me refresh and oops, it's not working yet. So that's because I've not saved this file. Save it and refresh again. And OK, that's looking pretty terrible. And I've just realized that this should have a class equal to pizza, oops, pizza item, because we used that class in the SAS. So let me save that and refresh. And now that looks a little bit better. Now it doesn't look great still, but in the next video, we are going to introduce uh, Bootstrap as well when we start talking about authentication and scaffolding. So this will look a bit better then. But we've also linked this up. So if we click on this now, we can see that this looks a bit better. This is the details. If we go back to all pizzas, it takes us back. And if we go to forward slash pizzas forward slash create again, we get this right here. This field set has got a big border around it. So I'm going to go to the SAS over here again, and I'm going to add into that page if I can find it. It's not pizza details. It's this one right here. Create pizza. I'm going to get the field set at the bottom and I'm going to say the border is zero. Save that and let's try refreshing over here to see if that makes any effect. Yep, that looks better. OK, so I know that this was a little bit long winded, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how to use SAS and compile that into CSS for use in your projects.